Good morning. Welcome to Prosser United Methodist Church on this fine December morning, December 5th of 2021, the second Sunday of Advent. I have a couple of announcements to uh, lift up. You have an announcements page in your bulletin there. Um, and I want to notice uh, or to note the uh, December 5th there, which is today the uh, thank you to all of those uh, who are decorating tables downstairs uh, right now, as well as uh, uh, earlier and, and even after the service and bringing that holiday uh, festive uh, feeling to our coffee hour today. That uh, does indicate that we are downstairs in our fellowship hall today for fellowship, uh, our fellowship hour, coffee hour. And uh, the last bits of pieces were put back into place in the kitchen over the, over the weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday. And um, so we are uh, ready to, uh, to use it now. And uh, uh, we've got uh, some more kind of things to do. The women are meeting on Monday uh, and at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, and also they will be having some men help them out. Uh, the women are going to be putting things away out of the boxes that, uh, of, uh, that were packed up when they uh, uh, were clearing out the kitchen. Um, and the men will be helping out in terms of bringing them the boxes and also running the dishwasher, uh, cleaning all of the stuff that come out of the, the stuff that comes out of the boxes uh, to uh, put away. If you want to participate in that, just show up at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and uh, you can help out. I also want to uh, note that our Christmas Eve service will be Friday, December 24th at 7 p.m. It will be our usual uh, lesson of, uh, or series of uh, service, there we go, service of lessons and carols. Uh, we will have uh, the readings that uh, take us from the Old Testament and into the birth of Jesus. And we will have also uh, some carols that we can, if you prefer to hum, you can hum along. If uh, things are going well uh, in terms of the statistics, we may even sing softly through our masks our, uh, our Christmas carols for that night. So that will be, uh, that will be nice. And now, uh, as we start our worship service, I invite Marge Ray and her family to come forward and to lead us in the candle lighting service. The first, our first candle of, or excuse me, for those of you who are worshiping at home, uh, we invite each of you to light your own Advent candles uh, with our readers each week. You'll need to collect a, a gathering of five candles. And at this point of the service, uh, you would be lighting the candles along with our candle lighters. And now Marge and her family will lead us through the liturgy for the lighting of the second Advent candle. Good morning. Our first candle of Advent recognize God's promise of salvation for all, reminding us of our commitment to do better, to be better. But what else should we do to prepare? Malachi has given the gift of prophecy centuries ago. Look, I am sending my messenger who will clear the path before me. Suddenly the Lord whom you are seeking will come to his temple the messenger of the covenant in whom you take delight is coming, says the Lord of heavenly forces. John the Baptist was that messenger who will clear path for the coming of Christ. God made flesh, fulfilling Malachi's prophecy. Whenever we're together, we are together or apart, we now light our second candle in Advent. Just as you fulfilled the promise of Malachi's prophecy through John. Help us, Lord, to trust in you so we may see your promise of salvation filled in our lives as had been foretold. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We and now, now uh, remain seated, and you are invited to listen to the hymn of response and maybe hum along if you'd like. If you remember the tune, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
And now the Hebrew scripture, Malachi 3, verses 1 through 4, and this is a new Revised Standard Version. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. And the gospel reading, Luke 1, verses 68 to 79, also the New Revised Standard Version. Blessed be the Lord of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of our God. The dawn from on high will break upon us and to give light to those who sit in darkness, in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Let's join together in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations upon each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Malachi's passage here from chapter 3 starts off with, Behold the messenger. And when we read about the messenger in the Old Testament, we hear about the messenger early in the Gospels. We know they're talking about John the Baptist, the one who came before Jesus and was the prophet of the Most High, as Zechariah says uh, in his uh, uh, um, speech there. Um, But John was not the only messenger in the Bible. In fact, there were lots of messengers in the Bible. In fact, in the ancient, um, in in the Greek language, The word angel actually means messenger. When we hear about the stories of angels in the Old Testament and in the New, we're hearing about messengers. And they are really messengers from God. When you think about it, think about the angels that came to visit with Abraham. They talked with him and they were messengers. They brought him a particular message. Uh, The burning bush was not an angel, but there was a message there for Moses. Joseph had those dreams that were messages for him and his life. And people throughout the Old Testament, there were messengers who came to them, God's messages, primarily through the prophets like Malachi here. Malachi prophesying about a time when the Lord's favor would be upon Israel once again. In the New Testament stories, uh, we have messengers that come to see Mary and Joseph, as well as Zechariah, John the Baptist's father. We have messengers also in the people who are parts of those stories. Malachi is a person who is a messenger. But so also are the disciples of Jesus. They are the messengers that carry the message 
of God out to the people. And Jesus was probably the messenger of messengers. The one who brought the message of God directly to us in human form. But again, they're not the only messengers. Because although we read these stories in the Bible, they're not the only messengers who have influenced our lives. the angels who have been part of our lives. You can probably think about a name in your head. Those who have been messengers in your life, who have brought you the message of faith, the message of hope, messages that helped you make it through life. They have been messengers also. And then finally, we are messengers. Each one of us is a messenger. We send out messages, messages all the time. When I was a parent of a small young child, he's not so small these days, but a parent of a small young child, I was reminded that I give messages to that child all the time that that young person is looking at me and watching me and listening to me and that I needed to be careful about which kind of message I wanted to give to that child. And so I learned to curb my immediate reactions sometimes and instead sit down and talk with my child. We are messengers also to those around us, adults as well as children. We continue to be messengers all our lives. And that admonition to be thoughtful about what it is that we are saying, the message that we are giving to others about ourselves, about how we think about them, even about our God and our faith. We need to be aware and thoughtful about the message that we give, the message we proclaim, the way that we are angels to others. I see on the back of cars sometimes, you know, there's the good angel and bad angel images, decals or whatever. Sometimes they're on somebody's shoulders. We have those messages inside of us, yeah. Hopefully we are the modeling the good one, though, for others. Because that's what these scriptures call us to do. These scriptures that help us to focus on Advent, help us to focus on the coming event of Christ's birth, remind us that God gave us messages of hope, of love, of peace. And that these are messages that we are to pass on to others. As we are the messenger. So Malachi says, behold, the messenger shall come Zechariah says, you shall be the prophet of the Most High. But we need to say to all of us here, behold the messengers that are around us in this space and in our lives. Let us always remember those messengers and let us pass on that message of hope of peace and of God's love
I invite you all now to stand uh, as you are able and to turn in the back of the hymnal to number 880, the Nicene Creed. And let us join together in this affirmation of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, oh, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He died for death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He was a glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. As we come to our time of prayer, I would invite you uh, to hold Catherine Barr in prayer, uh, in your prayers this week. Uh, she has been to the doctor this past week. Uh, there was a suspicion that she might have pneumonia. Um, tests were not conclusive on that, um, but they're going to be doing some more tests. She's having difficulty breathing, um, and uh, so she's, uh, she's in need of our prayers. Let's join together in prayer. Eternal God, we come before you as your people in prayer and we share with you the joys and the concerns that are upon our hearts in this moment of silence. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gifts that you give to us in this life. For the gift of life itself, for the world around us and its seasons of planting and harvest, of work and of rest. For the air that we have to breathe, the clean water we have to drink, the food that we have to eat, 
shelter we have from the cold. We give you thanks for friends and family, people we love and who love and care for us. We give you thanks for neighbors and coworkers, people in our communities whose work makes our lives better. We give you thanks for the many messengers around this world. We're seeking to share your message of peace and of hope in our world. Lord, we pray for people who do not have enough food to eat or clean water to drink or the shelter from the cold. Who are seeking to recover from mudslides, from floodings, from earthquakes and forest fires. People who have nothing left of the lives they had before. People have to leave as refugees because of wars, because of famine. People who do not feel that message of hope and peace within themselves. Lord, help us to be the people you call us to be. Help us to reach out to them in their need. To share out of the abundance that we have, especially in this season of hope. Lord, we pray for our world and for its leaders. Help them to make wise decisions that will make all of our lives better. Lord, guide your church to be that angel, to be that messenger for the world, sharing your message with them. We pray this in the name of the risen Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to turn to page nine in your hymnals, or if you are watching online, you should have the liturgy for the uh, communion service available to you. The words that you have uh, in either case will not be exactly the same words I will be saying, but my introductions to what you have to say will always be the same as what's printed in there. 
We will be doing communion a little differently than we've been doing recently. We are going back to uh, what we had been doing before, where I will hand you a piece of the bread and you will dip it into a cup. Um, and that will be done right down at the front there. We, uh, with our decorations here for the sanctuary, we don't have as much space to kneel at the altar rail as we had in the past. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send empty away. Your own Son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread gave thanks to you for it, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you for it, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in unison with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here in person and online, and on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As I said, uh, you'll simply come forward. If you are not able to come forward, uh, please remain in your seat and we will come to you with these, the elements. 
Uh, if you prefer not to take communion, uh, either because of COVID or personal other reasons, just remain in your seat. And if we try to offer it to you, just go ahead and shake your head and we'll move on. I invite you to stand for the benediction. Now go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. 
Repay no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve our God in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen.